Hey, it's Adam here and I am at the Bank of England and I want to talk about five things to watch for from the Bank of England in 2018. Number one thing to watch for in 2018 is inflation. The Bank of England currently has an inflation problem. Inflation is running right around 3% and is close to a five year high. So what's going to happen in 2018? The Bank of England has hiked rates and is under some pressure uh, to deliver lower inflation. I think the inflation problem isn't real. It's a product of the drop in the pound and now that it's recovered late into 2017, we're going to have the opposite effect happening in 2018. So inflation is going to undershoot and that will mean there aren't going to be rate hikes in 2018. Number two, Brexit. The big topic always in London and at the Bank of England here is Brexit. What will it mean for the economy and how is it going to affect inflation. For me, it's not as bad as it seems. The depression in the pound and a lot of the overstated political fears mean that the impacts won't be as negative as anticipated. And we saw that in 2017 and late 2016 after the vote. Growth has been okay in the UK. Sure, it's not as strong as it could be, but Brexit hasn't hit that hard. And I think it's not going to hit hard in 2018. Sure, it will restrain investment, it will restrain a bit of spending, and it will cause some uncertainty, but uncertainty doesn't stop people from going to work every day and trying to make money. So I think Brexit is probably overstated as a problem, and growth is going to be a little bit better than expected. The number three thing the Bank of England will be watching in 2018 is global synchronized growth. The Bank of England has joined the Bank of Canada, the Fed and some other central banks in hiking rates in 2017. The anticipation is that growth will pick up globally in 2018 and it's going to be a pretty good year. Now, the Bank of England isn't an island. Well, okay, the UK is an island, but it's not an island in the sense of the global economy. It's super connected and it's still very connected to Europe and the rest of the world. So. How do we reconcile that? If growth elsewhere accelerates, that is going to have positive spillovers in the UK. Growth is going to pick up as it piggybacks alongside global growth. Now, how much of that is already priced in? I'd argue quite a bit of it is. Uh, but still, I think there are some upside factors there, including stocks, including um, spillover from Europe, and including just a better sentiment about global growth and that's going to lead to some stronger investment and that's a good thing for the pound but not necessarily relative. Still, it will take some pressure um, off policymakers to deliver stimulus to the economy. The number four thing to watch in 2018 is Mark Carney. Now, Mark Carney has struggled at times in his tenure at the Bank of England. Uh, just around the corner here, he delivered the Mansion House speech a couple years ago, promised rate hikes, never delivered, but finally he can declare a small victory this year after having finally hiked rates. So good for him. However, his communication has been lacking and has been sending mixed messages time and time again. Part of that is the MPC model, but part of that is definitely his own doing. Carney is a hawk. He was a hawk in Canada. He was a hawk when he got to the Bank of England. He likes to hike rates. He thinks things are often better than they are. He's a big believer in the Phillips curve. He thinks inflation is coming in the tighter labor market. My guess is that even though the Bank of England doesn't hike next year, we get Mark Carney talking more about hiking rates and that is going to lead to more volatility in the pound as he talks about it and then as he has to walk it back because of lower inflation. Okay, the fifth thing to watch and this is the big one for me in 2017 from the Bank of England is wages. Wage growth around the world has been sluggish. In the UK it's been negative over the past year. 
The anticipation is that the tighter labor market will lead to higher wages. And this is the assumption at most global central banks. But there are questions. And what the UK is facing is the same as elsewhere. It's just not materializing. And I don't see any reason it should in 2018. Yes, the labor market is a little bit tighter. Unemployment is a little bit lower. But the bigger dynamics are still in play. Precarious work, temporary jobs, uh, influx of immigration, uh, low wages, uh, globalization, offshoring, on and on and on. If wages do surprise and move to the upside, um, it would be to me a big shock. And I think markets have priced in a very low probability of that. However, central bankers want to believe. And I think Mark Carney may see some signs of wage inflation that aren't really there or they aren't really sustainable and talk about hiking rates. Now, finally, the thing to remember about the pound and the bigger dynamic in 2018 central banking is that the currency market is suddenly the conduit for monetary policy. If Mark Carney starts talking about hiking rates or hikes rates, you're going to see the pound rally maybe 500 pips just on speculation alone. To me, that's the equivalent of at least two rate hikes. And suddenly, now the market has tightened too much. And now you have this disinflationary pressure. And that's happening already with the higher pound uh, just in the last six months. I think that's going to happen over and over again to different global central banks who hike and then they have to walk it back quickly. And you know, you're going to see this play out over and over again. And that is the story in the pound is to fade almost anything from global central banks because any sort of quick move up in a currency is going to have a negative effect on inflation and on the economy six months or 12 months out. So for Forex Live at the Bank of England, I'm Adam Button.